Hi friends, it's Jewel Bads. I hope you're having a great week. Um, today I'm going to be discussing the 2009 horror movie Case 39. I'm going to be discussing it based on its premise, its production value and artistic choices, and then finally how it compares or contrasts to other films of the genre. I hope you enjoy. is a social worker who has a lot on her plate. She actually has 38 cases that she's balancing and her life's pretty hectic. Being a social worker and a child advocate is a really rough job and um, you know she's getting yelled at all day on the phone, everything you can think of. It's just a hard job. One day her supervisor gives her another case, case 39. It's an interesting one. There's a little girl who they suspect is being neglected but they don't have any hard evidence. Um, when Emily goes out to investigate, she finds that there's a very, very weird, tense dynamic in the house, but there's nothing solid that she can really point a finger to. So she manages to pull the little girl in question aside, and she gives her her phone number and says, hey, you know, if anything happens, you know, call me. Because um, they have like a, a nice little connecting moment there, and it's pretty clear that the girl's parents, they really don't like her, but it's not enough to qualify as child abuse and child neglect. Um, so time passes on, Emily keeps balancing her other cases, and then one night she gets a call from this little girl in case 39, and she says that her parents are gonna come after her. Scared, Emily calls a friend and they start driving over there in the middle of the night, and when they get there, they find that the little girl's parents have tied her up and locked her in the stove and are trying to cook her, kill her, something terrible. They managed to rescue her in time, and because the little girl and Emily developed kind of a nice little bond, um, and because the foster system is really clogged, um, as it always is, Emily makes a plea to be able to be this little girl's guardian temporarily. Um, under Emily's care, this little girl starts to thrive. She's angelic, she's very intelligent, she's doing better in school. She just it seems like a great solution, um, and her parents are being evaluated for, you know, whether there's something psychologically wrong with them or whatever, but the point is the little girl is safe. So all is well, right? Well, one night, one of Emily's other million cases um, of a little boy who's about 10, he murders his family. He murders them and bludgeons them to death, which is shocking and horrible because that's the little boy was troubled for sure, but I mean, he loved his parents, so this was very unusual. Um, however, what's even more unusual is they discover that shortly before he committed this terrible act, somebody from Emily's house called him at like two in the morning or something like that. And it certainly wasn't Emily. So what is going on? And does Emily have to worry about this little girl that she's brought into her house who is essentially a stranger? I'll have to watch to find out. Case 39 was a visually powerful movie. Um, it brought some real star power to the screen. Uh, Renee Zellweger, Jodell Furland, Bradley Cooper, who are all very famous actors. Um, they were all great in their roles and did a really great job. Plus having that star power added some legitimacy to the movie. On top of that, this movie was visually very impressive. Um, there was a lot of variety of the shots. You really felt like you got to know the world they were in. Um, this weird, creepy house that the little girl had grown up in, Emily's house, um, her office place. You really got to see how expansive the set was. No detail was spared. It was pretty nice. But while they had a variety of shots, you know, up close, far away, um, and at some angles, they also had a couple random shots that were really unusual with the camera swirling in a way that you don't see all the time. And so um, it really stayed visually fresh. Musically, it was sort of standard fare, but I thought it was tastefully done. Um, this movie did utilize CGI at certain points. I thought that for the most part, it was well done. Um, really, it was fairly believable. There is one scene where a character is being attacked by hornets and they're all CGI. And it's very good CGI, especially considering this movie came out in 2009. Most of the other um, horror elements of this movie were done with practical effects, so the occasional scenes where there were CGI it was noticeable, however I don't think it took away from the overall effect of the movie. The pacing of this movie was really solid. You start out off the bat in the little girl's creepy house, then you cut to Emily and her stressful life, and they kept things really well paced overall. Um, altogether, whoever 
was making the artistic decisions behind this movie really knew what they were doing and they equipped themselves with a really good team to just make it feel very polished overall. Now I'm going to be discussing how this movie stands apart from or blends into other films of the genre. I am going to be spoiling this movie so if you don't want any spoilers uh, please know that it was lovely having you, um, but this is your cue to leave. Um, if you want to watch this movie, I watched it on Netflix. Um, it should still be there for streaming if you want to. I'm sure it's available other places as well. For those of you who are sticking around, thank you. Emily can't believe that this little girl would have made a call to this kid and said something to him that would set him off, but her friend slash friend with benefits friend slash friend with benefits slash co-worker um, gets really weird vibes from this little girl. He doesn't like her. Late one night, she makes a call to his house and whispers something in his ear, and he seems to be besieged by all these terrible hornets. And when he was young, he was attacked by a hornet's nest, and it was a really traumatic incident for him. So he's freaking out that there's all these bees and ends up slipping and hitting his head and dying on his bathroom floor. Um, people at work are claiming that it's just a weird freak accident or a suicide or something, but Emily can't believe that. So she's starting to get suspicious of this little girl. So she starts making calls to her parents. Her parents swear that this girl has, she's a little girl, but she was born with the soul of a demon. Now that Emily knows that this little girl is a demon, um, her dad who's in jail warns her, you know, like, she knows your thoughts just so you know like she knows what you're thinking so you know basically you just have to accept that your life is over and try to stop the cycle several times emily gets close to trying to hurt the girl um you know at one point she pulls a knife but the the demon catches her and like flings it away and um, another time she tries to light her house on fire when the girl's inside but the girl escapes and now she has no house it's, it's pretty intense. Emily's kind of pulling her life apart. She's kind of at wit's end. And the demon is like laughing and knows it's in control. Finally, um, one day she's driving and the demon appears in the seat beside her. And Emily's like, I need to just get away. And the demon's like, no, like, no, we have to get along. No. And so she drives the car over a bridge cliff thing into a river and she manages to escape but the demon can't quite get out and as it's sinking in the in the water um she sees the little girl's face transform into the demon's face officially so she knows that she made the right move um her life's kind of a mess but she won in the end in many ways this was just a standard horror movie there weren't too many creative takes the idea that um you know an, an evil entity can learn your secrets and turn it against you and make you act in unusual ways has been done before a lot. The sequence with uh, where Bradley Cooper's character is besieged by hornets because he's afraid of them and they just attack him. It's, it's supposed to be obviously an allegory for fear taking over your life, but it's, 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 I feel like I've seen it before people getting attacked by bees all the time. Every movie, horror movie or not it's you know you've seen this scene before for me where this movie was a little bit different than other horror movies is that we've seen you know other movies where the child is haunted or like possessed or is a demon or whatever once the main character knows oh, okay i know what you really are then the creature's like oh i have no reason to hide this is the real me raw and you know reveals himself to be this evil creature in the case of the little girl in this movie the way they explain it is that she's a little girl, but her soul is a demon soul. So sometimes she acts like a kid and sometimes she acts like a demon. And what was unusual to me is that in this movie, after it's revealed that this girl is a demon and once the girl knows that people know she's a demon, um, instead of immediately starting to be like, I'm in charge here, which she does say that, um, she instead she acts like a demon who's in charge, but at other times she's still acting like a little girl who wants affection and wants little kid things. Um, there's a sequence where she wants to go back to this group therapy and Emily's like, no, you know, cause she doesn't want her to, you know, say bad things to the other, to the other kids and ruin their lives. And the girl like gets mad and she's like, no, if I say I want to go back to group, you have to let me. If I say that I want a new dress, you have to get it for me. If I say 
that I want to eat ice cream every day after school. You have to let me. And it's like, <laughs> some of those are very childish demands. And you're like, there's, why would a demon want to eat ice cream after school every day? Why does a demon care if it gets a new dress? You know, it's, <laughs> so in some ways she acted like a little girl. Um, there's another sequence where Emily is starting to like, you know, lose her mind. She's being tormented. So she's walking around the house angrily and she's getting annoyed and the little girl's ignoring her. She's watching music videos and eating popcorn on the couch. And Emily gets mad and like, he's like, pay attention to me. And the girl like, you know, blows up with demon power and then goes back to like watching hip hop. And it's like, it's, it's just interesting. Um, it's, it's just interesting because at times you really saw her as a demon, but at the same time she did act like a kid. And it's just kind of like, is she a really immature demon or like what's going on? So to me, that was kind of what made the movie stand apart. But in a lot of other ways, it was just a standard story. All of the scares you kind of anticipated, there was really nothing out of left field. Apparently when the movie first came out, it got a lot of really bad reviews. People were criticizing it for being very bland and formulaic. Um, I agree that it's very standard. However, I don't think it deserves as much criticism as it got. It's, yes, it's predictable in some ways, but it's it's very solid, um, which a lot of movies don't have that. It's not the most creative take, but it was still very enjoyable while I was watching it. Um, is it memorable? Not necessarily, but it was still enjoyable. So if I had to rate this movie, I would give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It... It was fun while I watched it. I'll say that. It was fun while I watched it. Um, not the most creative take ever, but the acting was solid. The pacing was good. Visually, it was interesting. And I thought it was fun. If you've seen this movie, um, I'd love to know your opinions. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with um, the reviewers when it first came out? Do you think it's too bland and terrible? Um, do, you, do you disagree with me? Do you think it's even better than I said or significantly worse? What is your take? I would love to hear it. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope that it was helpful to you or entertaining to you or I hope it wasn't a waste of your time. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I will hopefully see you soon with another review or two. All right. Bye. Thank you.